Good morning church family, Pastor Brett here and to visitors welcome to our devotional channel here at Rockhampton Baptist. Down through church history one of the most common things that has caused division among Christians is doctrine. It seems ironic that the followers of Jesus divide themselves according to their interpretations of the Word of God. Now, I'm not saying that doctrine is not important. Doctrine is crucially important. We need to be bearers of the truth. We need to guard against untruth. We need to protect the integrity of the gospel. Knowing the truth helps us to discern error. And this is a major theme in the New Testament. But there are times when our interpretations are based on quite scant evidences. We might hinge things on one or two verses, or sometimes the interpretation of just a word. The Corinthian churches were one, the Corinthian church was one of these churches. They divided themselves based on certain interpretations of lifestyle. One brother would judge another brother and cause factions within the church. Listen to what the Apostle Paul says to them about this. I'm reading from 1 Corinthians 8, verses 1 to 3. Now regarding your question about food that has been offered to idols, yes, we know that we all have knowledge about this issue. But while knowledge makes us feel important, it is love that strengthens the church. Anyone who claims to know all the answers doesn't really know very much. But the person who loves God is the one whom God recognises. Now it is important to understand the context here. Uh, it was in relation to eating meat that has been purchased in the marketplace. Now in Corinth, the butchers that operated in the marketplace quite likely got their meat from the pagan temple of Aphrodite. And so there was a very good chance that if you ate meat from the marketplace, it was considered to be offered to idols and therefore sin to many of the believers. Others saw it as just meat because idols didn't really matter. They weren't real gods. So this argument caused factions and Paul is saying to them, look, we all have knowledge on this issue. In other words, we all have a view here. And I think in part he's being a little bit sarcastic. You know, we all have doctrine. We all know that we're right. But he is pointing out that each group saw it or had their knowledge based on their own interpretations and what was most correct to them and to recognize that it actually divided them. And Paul's point here is not that the church should be competing about ideas, but the church should be building itself up in love. And the love he's talking here is not sentiment love, you know, that kind of empty sort of love where we say in our modern culture, oh, all things are permissible and we celebrate everything. We love, which means we don't criticize or correct anyone. That's not the love Paul's talking about. Or what he himself demonstrates. Love that is united in the gospel. It's a recognition that we are all sinners and in need of God's grace and that none of us have the monopoly on truth. The building up of the church is a higher priority than always being right. And those who claim to know everything, he says, really don't understand God at all. Only God knows all things. So our goal is, according to Paul, to love him. And we do this together. One believer might have different ideas and priorities to another. But our common vision is to love God. These are the people who really know. You're not a, ma you're not a mature Christian because you can argue your way through biblical doctrine. You are a mature Christian because you love God and are becoming more and more like Christ. Let's pray. 
Father, we understand the importance of recognizing the truth, but we also see that we bury ourselves into minute details and allow those things to become just as important as the gospel itself. Help us to discern the difference, Lord, between what is unmovable and what can be taken uh, lightly. And in that, Lord, that we put a priority on making sure that unity and the bond of love is what is most important in our journey. Help us each to relax a little, Lord, in the areas that we can't be certain in, and to be more firm in the areas that we're absolutely certain with regard to the truth of the gospel. And I pray that you will help us in this. We thank you, Lord, for that. In Jesus' name. Amen. Keep walking with God. Keep talking with him. Listen back to, from him as you read the Bible. And if he does speak to you, trust and obey. Keep looking for opportunities to bless others. And we'll see you soon.